This is section 3.3, .3, page 3. We're going to do an example of the quotient rule. So here I have, uh, this is asking me for the derivative of, this looks like a trinomial divided by a binomial. So I'm going to use the quotient rule. This top function we'll treat as g of x for a formula. Bottom function h of x. And um, we're going to use the quotient rule. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to rearrange that top function. Because I'd rather have it in the correct um, descending order of powers. Actually, that's plus 4. Um, you don't have to do that, but that's what I like to do. All right, so we'll get the derivative. Quotient rule says always start with the bottom function, so x minus 2. The derivative of the top. So the derivative of the top here is minus 2x minus 3. And then you subtract from that the top function, minus x squared minus 3x plus 4 times the derivative of the bottom, and the derivative of that is just going to be 1, all over the bottom squared. And now I just need to clean this up. So uh, I'm going to need to FOIL these and, distribute, and then distribute the 1. So FOILing uh, my first term, minus 2x squared, inside terms plus 4x, outside terms minus 3x, last terms plus 6. And then I have minus, and um, actually I don't have any real multiplication that I have to do here, so I don't really need that set of parentheses. What I'm going to do is um, go ahead and distribute the negative sign immediately. Must be out of whiteout. Um, if I if I did have something here to distribute, I'd want to set of parentheses, distribute, and then take care of the negative sign last that I certainly don't want to do. I don't want to have a sign error. So I'm going to have plus x squared plus 3x minus 4. All right, and this is all over x minus 2 squared. Do not multiply out the denominator. Okay, now just combine like terms. Let's see my x squareds. I have a minus x squared and a plus x squared, so it leaves me with a minus x squared. My x's, I got a 4x minus 3x plus 3x, so it leaves me with a plus 4x. And my numerics, plus 6 minus 4 is a plus 2, all over the denominator squared. And you would want to see if you can simplify this, um, but this particular one does not factor or simplify. Um, so this is, this is done. That's the derivative. Okay, next one. This problem is asking us to find all the derivatives for this large polynomial. Basically, this is just repeated use of the power rule. So my first derivative, f prime of x, uh, I have 40x to the fourth plus 28x cubed minus 9x squared minus 24x plus 15, and the derivative of that is 0, so I'm done with that. So there's actually one less term in the derivative function and the highest power of x is reduced by 1. Second derivative, we'll denote the second derivative by f double prime. Let's calculate this with the power rule. 160x cubed plus, um, what is this, 84x squared minus 18x minus 24. That one's gone because its derivative is 0. Third derivative, f triple prime equals, this is 480x squared plus 168x minus 18. That one's gone. Fourth derivative. Now, now I'm going to change my notation. I don't want so many tick marks that I can't, that it takes long to, to count them, so we'll just use this. Now this doesn't mean f of x to the fourth power. This is the fourth derivative of the function f of x. So I have 960x plus 168. That's gone. Fifth derivative, 960, plus that, plus 0, rather. Sixth derivative, the derivative of a constant is just 0. I could actually do the seventh derivative. Seems like we're done. Actually, we kind of are done. The derivative of 0 is, again, just 0, and that pattern will continue. So in order to truly show all the derivatives, we've really only shown the first seven here, to show all of the derivatives, we need to add 
this final notation, f to the, the nth derivative of the function is equal to 0 for n is, let's see, it starts at 6, greater than or equal to 6. This is an essential part of the answer. All of these derivatives with polynomial pieces left over, all the way down till you get to zeros, and then finish the problem off with this. That truly defines all of the derivatives. Okay, next, um, a hint for homework problems if you're looking in the textbook, section 3.3, between cross 15 and 21. It's asking to, um, the instructions say find the derivative and support your answer graphically. So basically, um, this is just telling you that you can use your calculator um, to check your answers on your derivatives. So what you should do is, uh, and I'm going to show you the, the quotient rule problem we did above. So in y1, put in your given function. So in our case, change the... So in our case, we have the original function here. So put that in y1. In y2, put in your derivative using math 8. So a special notation on that. Remember the variable is x. Put in your function y1 here. So you can use alpha f4 for that. And then instead of a particular value for the derivative, you put the variable x there. Okay? Then... So this would graph, if that's all you had, this would graph the function and its derivative. But as a third step to, to check your answer, you're going to put your calculated answer for f prime into the third function. And if you notice, that's what I've done here. There's our answer that we came up with in the third function. And um, I also, I think it's a good idea to, to come over to this, this part of your graph or screen. Change that to the thick line so that you can see uh, the difference between these. Now, if you watch it graph, it'll graph the y1 first, then it'll graph your derivative, and then it'll come back through and graph your answer for the derivative. So if your answer for the derivative graphs right on top of the calculator derivative, then you know you got it right. So let's watch this graph. So this is the original function graphing. The next one coming in, this is the derivative of the function that's graphing. It has a couple parts here. There's the derivative. Almost completed. And now the third thing it's going to graph is my answer. And there it is. See, how it's got a thicker line. And that thick line is right on top of the derivative it graphed for y2. So I am confident that my answer is correct.